Here's your Forbes Daily Briefing for Friday, February 23rd. Today on Forbes, this miner might change the future of the iPhone. Bernard Rowe is an exploration geologist and CEO of Australian mining company Ioneer. Rowe, who was 56 years old, came to Nevada prospecting for gold and copper and was struck by Rhyolite Ridge, a volcanic rock outcrop in the southwest part of the state. He says, quote, Rhyolite Ridge is an amazing deposit. There's not another one like it in the world. Rowe collected ore samples, which proved to have high concentrations of lithium and boron. The discovery prompted a call to his friend James Calloway, a Texan who had developed one of the world's biggest lithium mines in Argentina. After due diligence, in 2017, they secured enough mineral rights in Nevada's Esmeralda County to potentially produce more than 100,000 tons of lithium a year, enough to make batteries for billions of iPhones and millions of electric cars. Now they just need to start digging. Rhyolite Ridge is on federal land, requiring permits from the Department of the Interior's Bureau of Land Management. But given China's dominance in lithium, it refined 75% of the world's 1 million tons of 2023 production. Callaway, Ioneer's chairman, believed his project would be favored politically. After all, the U.S. currently produces just 7,000 tons annually. However, there was a complication. A six-inch high desert wildflower with yellow blooms called Teams Buckwheat. The heart of this rare perennial's 900-acre range is right where Ioneer intended to mine. So the company worked with desert botanists, including researchers at the University of Nevada, to devise a plan to dig up and, quote, translocate thousands of plants to similar terrain nearby. Callaway says, quote, our analysis showed that it should work. But Callaway didn't get the chance to try. After 40% of the native population, about 17,000 plants, died mysteriously in the summer of 2020, environmentalists petitioned for its inclusion as an endangered species. Undeterred, Ioneer submitted revised mining plans in early 2022. Months later, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service officially designated Teams Buckwheat as endangered. Callaway's Desert Bloom Dilemma exposes a critical challenge facing policymakers. Who prevails in green versus green, when one environmental concern comes into conflict with another? Is digging up enough minerals like lithium, neodymium, and dysprosium to enable the electric vehicle transition worth killing 44,000 small plants growing in the middle of the Nevada desert? Should we erect offshore wind turbines if they kill whales and seabirds? If so, how many dead whales is too many? Callaway says, quote, everyone wanted this to work for the good of the world. That includes the Biden administration, which announced in 2023 that it would lend Ioneer $700 million for the project if permits were approved. But the mine's chorus of detractors, including the Tucson, Arizona-based Center for Biological Diversity, were too loud to ignore. Callaway says that the ultimate solution to Ioneer's buckwheat conundrum required psychological reframing. He says, quote, We shifted from hostility toward this thing, that it was an impediment to us, to embracing the plant as a symbol. We decided we were going to be responsible for taking care of these plants. Once that happened, everything changed. Ioneer redesigned the mining pit around a strict, quote, no-touch policy, with a buffer zone of hundreds of feet around all but a handful of plants. Instead of leaving an island of Team's buckwheat flanked by an open-cut quarry, they shifted some operations a half-mile away. And then they doubled down on an ambitious biology project. Outside Carson City, Nevada, Ioneer has botanists operating a 1,600-square-foot greenhouse in which they cultivate buckwheat, collect seeds, and insist that the plant can grow happily in slightly alkaline-enriched garden soil. Callaway says, quote, The plant's best chance of survival is by our work. For full coverage, check out Christopher Hellman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.